Hello everyone. Hi, Kelly Lee Sappenfield here. Today I'm going to talk to you about are you being present? Now, what do I mean by are you being present? Let me give you an example of what just happened to me. I'm doing the dishes, right? Getting ready, emptying the dishwasher, getting ready for this live, thinking about what I'm going to say to you and all that stuff, right? And I'm not present. I'm not present in myself. I'm not present in my surroundings. And I knock my ankle up against the side of the dishwasher. And guess what? I took a chunk out of my skin. When we are not being present, it is clear. Spirit comes in and says, hey, pay attention, right? So are you being present? Hi, is the angel? Angel? Um, so when was the last time that spirit kind of let you know you're not really being present? Uh, and it's not that I can't walk and chew gum. It's just that spirit was knocking on my shoulder and saying, hmm, are you really being present? Are you really being present in what you're doing right at this moment? Not that emptying the dishwasher is anything exciting or anything that takes a lot of mind power, but was I really being present? No, I wasn't. And I know it because I tend to kind of separate myself, my spirit from my body sometimes. And every once in a while, then spirit comes in and kind of knocks me on the head or in this case on the ankle and says, okay, come back and do it all the humanists right that we're dealing with and spirit gives us signs all the time you're seeing signs everywhere the question is are you paying attention and are you listening as soon as i knocked my ankle i was like yeah i know i wasn't being present i wasn't in the moment my mind was off in a totally different area and i wasn't paying attention to walking around the edge of the dishwasher Sometimes it's as simple as that, but other times it's a lot more major, right? Sometimes it's, you haven't been present for so long that we're really going to make you notice. And there's nothing wrong with thinking about what you're gonna do, planning out what you're gonna do, visioning what you're gonna do, but at the same time, don't be so disconnected that you whack your ankle up with some dishwasher, right? So I would love to hear from you in the comments the last time you weren't present and spare it kind of let you know that, hey, maybe you need to come back and be a little bit more cognizant of your surroundings right now because that's one of the easiest ways that if we're not used to seeing spirit signs and we're not used to reading them and we're not used to saying, oh, okay, squeeze three, look, I can't speak. Three squirrels just came up to me, three of them. And they all came up to me. They didn't scurry off because they saw a human, right? So that must be a sign. So maybe I should look up what squirrel means and see where that fits in my life, right? Sometimes you're driving down the road and there's literally, I'm having difficulty speaking today, clearly, <clears throat> literally a billboard and whatever the caption is answers the question, hi, Renee. And I have been doing that. And sometimes the billboard is for something I have no interest in, I, ha I don't need. It could be a plumber, it could be a doctor, it could be a politician. It doesn't matter what the billboard is for. But whatever the caption is that catches my eye is the answer to the question I've been asking. And so when we start being really present is when we start really noticing the answers were in seeking and, and the signs spirits giving us and the taps on the shoulders that say, okay, 
we don't want you to trip and fall and you're not paying attention to your surroundings so we're going to knock and take a skin out of a piece a skin out of your ankle so that you don't trip and fall and possibly do more harm to yourself while putting away dishes right now granted my ankle's throbbing now and i had to clean it all up because it literally took a chunk of skin out of my ankle so i had to clean it all up but that is spirit telling me okay my mind's been going all day long on new programs that i can send out to you to help you to live your best life to to tune into metaphysics to grow your soul's vibration and everything my mind's been in that creative mode all day long and not really in my human mode does that make sense let's see renee says seeing squirrel symbolizes energy focus through its goals yes it does from another point of view the squirrel's cheerful activities is a reminder for us to play and enjoy life Woohoo! i'm all for that right maybe i need to get in my pool later today um, the, their propensity to hide acorns is a lesson in being prepared. As spirit animal, the squirrel is also a symbol of socialization. And that's what we need right now, right? We're all dying for socialization. And this is a form of socialization, right, Renee? It, it, but it's not the same. It's like I was, I'm scheduled to speak in Mountain View, California at the end of June. And chances are it's going to go virtual. And I'm still going to do it. I'm still going to love it just like I love doing this. But it's not the same as getting in front of the people, getting on stage, speaking, teaching, and interacting, and having the energy flowing in the room and, and all of that. And there is a difference. There is a difference in how we're having to be social right now and how we've been used to being social. Uh, we're not going out to dinner with our friends. We're not, when we meet them, going up and grabbing them and giving them a big hug, right? Um, we may elbow tap them, right? Um, but it's one of those things that when we pay attention to the signs, whether it's me knocking the bejeebies out of my ankle today or the three squirrels or anything else that comes across, we really need to pay attention. Are we being present? Are we being present in what we're doing? Because if we get so into the spiritual, we lose our humanness. And we're here to have nice, even balance, right? We're to grow our soul's vibration while we're being human. And why are we to do that? Because we can grow and evolve much faster and in this dense atmosphere we call Earth in our solar system. And there's that give and take, that the polarity, positive to negative, dense to not dense. Um, now, granted, sometimes when I step on the scale, I wish I was on the moon and I, the gravity wasn't quite so much and I wouldn't, the scale wouldn't say quite what it is. But seriously, when we are here, we're supposed to be growing, but we're supposed to be growing with that even balance, the even balance of spirituality and our humanity. And it's really, really easy to get all tuned in to the spirituality and kind of get off balance with our humanity. And that's why being present brings us back into that balance. Now, same's true to if we tip the other way and we disconnect spiritually and we don't listen to the signs. Spirit's going to tap you on the shoulder or in my case, the ankle and say, be present. Be present holistically, mind, body, and soul. They are all connected. As long as we're alive, we're learning, we're teaching, we're healing, we're helping others heal. 
and we have to be balanced with our spirituality and our humanity. Now, some of us don't necessarily like one aspect or the other. Be present and seek what is it that you're not wanting to be present about. Because that little kernel speaks volumes. If you're just wanting, remember to be gone with the wind and Tara saying, I'll take care of that tomorrow. I'll do that tomorrow, 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 tomorrow. That's not being present. Now, if you're literally hoeing a field and you can't get done and the sun is setting, okay, maybe you have to finish it tomorrow. But at the same time, if you keep pushing things off till tomorrow, till tomorrow, till tomorrow, till tomorrow, we talked about this just yesterday. Tomorrow never comes, right? What we have is today. We need to be present today. We need to be doing what we need to be doing today. We need to be making sure we're tuning in, turning on and tapping into our spirituality and our humanity. And right now, tapping into our humanity in one way is uplifting. Because we're all in this together with this pandemic, right? And we're supporting our nurses. We're supporting our firefighters. We're doing what we can to keep the spread down and all of that. But at the same time, there's a little bit of fear and insecurity underlying in it, right? If I go to the grocery store, am I going to get sick? If I go visit my parents, am I going to make them sick? If my child goes out and plays with the neighbor kid, are we going to have an issue, right? <laughs> Brenna, you needed this kick in the butt today. You're very welcome. And why did you need this kick in the butt today? What is it bringing up for you? So with that, Right now, with this dichotomy in our humanity, a lot of people are wanting to just kind of close off their humanity and just focus on their spirituality. Focus on your spirituality, but at the same time, really and truly still focus in on your humanity. We wear our masks when we go to the grocery store. Why? For humanity. I'm not wearing the mask. For my health, I'm wearing the mask because I care about you. And heaven forbid if I've been exposed and I'm asymptomatic, I don't want you to get this, right? So as lovely as the masks are, I still wear one to the grocery store. And so really think about where you're being present, where you're not being present, and why aren't you being present? Because if you're not being present in a certain area of your life, could be your marriage, could be your other family members or friends, it could be in your health, it could be in your spirituality, it could be in your finances, any area of your life, are you being present? Now, that does not mean that you're focused intently on that area of your life 24-7. We have too many, I mean, there's eight major areas of our life. We are not focused on any one area 24-7, right? But think of it kind of like a bicycle wheel. If you only have seven-eighths of that wheel aired up, guess what? You've got a flat tire. Now, that doesn't mean that all areas of your life are rolling around at the same level, right? On a scale of 1 to 10, 1 may be a 9, 1 may be a 7, 1 may be an 8, 1 may be a 6. That's fine. It's when you get an 8 and a 2. Do you understand what I'm saying? So, Think of the different areas of your life. And 
one of them, like Renee said about squirrel, about enjoying life and playing and having fun, our recreation and all of that is, is a key part of our lives. We cannot be just work, 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 work 24 seven. So when was the last time you played? And just because I'm 50 does not mean I don't get a play still. I may not be playing with stuffed animals and Barbie dolls anymore, <clears throat> but I can definitely get out in the pool and play, right? Um, so what areas of your life are you present? What areas of your life are you not present? And really think about it and say, okay, maybe I need, maybe I just need to spend a little bit of time and focus on that area of my life right now. Because I don't want to have happen to me what happened to Kelly Lee today and knock the bejeebies out of my ankle and take a bunch of skin out of my ankle, right? And create a whole big mess. And so dishes have to be done, but when we do them, are we present while we're doing them? Or are we so not present while we're doing them because it's such a mundane chore that you knock your leg upside the dishwasher door, right? It's kind of like, have you ever taken a long car drive, maybe cross country or something, and all of a sudden, you're like, oh, where was I the last mile or so? I kind of checked out. It's a good thing the road was straight. Good thing I'm in the middle of the desert on this straight, no curvy highway, right, with no traffic, because I just checked out. That's all happened to us, right? And when we come to that realization that I was checked out, we're like, because our first instinct is, oh my gosh, what if I had run off the side of the road? What if I'd hit another car? What if I'd hit a deer? What if, you know, all those things run through our mind because we don't want to harm anyone else or ourselves. So where is it that you really need to pay attention? And what are the signs you're getting that saying, pay attention? I would really like to know how are you in the next 24 hours going to pay attention and just tune in for a moment to each area of your life and say, hmm, is there something I'm ignoring? Is there something I keep trying to push under the rug, right? Is there something that I keep putting off till tomorrow and putting off till tomorrow and putting off till tomorrow. Um, Cause maybe you need, maybe you just need to do it, get it over with, get it behind you and say, okay, thank you. I appreciate that. It's kind of like our taxes. Every year we get to do our taxes. Every year we're like, Oh, I got to do my taxes. Right. But we do them and we get them over it with it. Once again, I'm having trouble clearly speaking. <laughs> um, so don't push things under the rug. And I don't care how long you've been pushing it under the rug. It could be something came in the mail that you have to deal with Monday. And today's Thursday. And you threw it on your desk and you really don't want to deal with it. Maybe you should just pull it out. Take care of it and be done. Right? I hope this helps you. I hope that this has really, really um, helped you see where you're present, where you're not present, and what signs is spirit telling you? Right, Renee, we have to have compassion for others, don't we? Absolutely, absolutely.
And we do need to stay focused in the present moment. There is nothing, meditate. Meditate, meditate, meditate. But don't meditate 24 seven. Don't meditate when you're driving a car. Don't, you know, there's a time and place for everything. Nuri, um, I think your comment, um, it's not letting me translate it. I'm so sorry. So um, if you know how to uh, write English, that would be great. If not, after this, I'll put, it'll probably allow me to translate and I can respond to you. Yes, sometimes life can be overwhelming, Renee. I and you say, I have to remember to ask God and the angels into everything. Honey, my angels, my guides, God, the divine, whatever title you give the divine. I'm calling them in all the time. I'm like, okay, peeps, come on, come on. I need the info, I need the help, I need you to show me the way, I need the signs, bring it on, right? So that's awesome. Okay, you say it's not your first nature to help, but when you do, everything goes much smoother. Don't look at it as a crutch. Because when you say it's not your first nature to ask for help, to me, when you're asking for help in that regard, you're asking for help as you feel like it's a crutch. It's a burden on somebody. Your guides and angels and God are not there as a burden. They are your warriors and they're there to serve you and to protect you and to help you and to guide you and to open up the doors for you. And so put them to work. Say, hey, I need to know this. I need to be shown this. I need help. They will provide it. It is not. I need help going through my kids clothes for the year and figuring out what fits them and what doesn't fit them and giving away to the donation to help someone else. It's not the same thing. And there's a universal law of reference where I'm going to have trouble speaking again. The universal law of giving and receiving. If you have trouble receiving, start giving. Because if you have trouble asking for help, that means you're having trouble receiving. So you need to start opening yourself up to receiving. And one way to open yourself up to receiving is to give. Because everything, everything is an energy. Thing. And if you can't receive the help of someone saying, oh, okay, I'll come over and I'll, I'll help you plant your garden this year. If you can't receive help like that, how are you going to receive help when it comes to the big stuff that you really need your warriors out there helping for you, right? When you're asking for those big things, you're going to you have to be open to receiving it. Think of the lottery. Oh, it'd be wonderful if I won Powerball, right? Are you open to it? Or not? Really think about, also Renee, where are you open and where are you closed? And why do you not like asking for help? Is it because you were raised with the paradigm of you're a strong woman and you can do it on your own and you don't need help and you're out to prove yourself? Or is it that you don't think you're worthy of it? Something to think about. You're welcome, sweetie. 
So today, really think about where you're present, where you're not, what the signs you're being shown are, right? Because those signs, if you're not paying attention, you're not going to see them. Just like the three little squirrels that came up to me today. Squirrels normally don't come up to people. They normally just scatter and carry on their own little way. So you have to really be open to those signs. You really have to do some inner work. Do some inner work. What are the eight areas of your life? What, what are you not being present in? What are you not willing to receive? And are you giving, 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 giving till you've run yourself dry? There's an old saying, you can only get water from a well that's not run dry. And you can always only pour from a pitcher that's full. So if you're giving, 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 giving at the expense of yourself, then you're not being present in what you need, what you deserve, and what you also need to receive. Okay? So think about that. Let me know in the comments what you think, which area of the life of life that you really know. Okay, I'm not being president. And hopefully y'all have a much safer day than I have had so far. If you go to my website, kellyleesappenfield.com, I have a freebie on there, the five essentials for impacts. And it's all about how we protect our own energy. So if you are an empath, which I'm sure you are if you're watching this, are you protecting your energy? Or is your energy so unbalanced that that is clearly one of those areas that you need to pay, be present in and pay attention to? And is there any more questions or anyone have anything else to say? Before we get off of here, um, I will be speaking either at East West Bookshop in Mountain View, California, the last weekend of June, or it will be via Zoom, one or the other. Um, there's two different topics. Saturday night is you don't have to die to transform. And Sunday is soul evolution and raising your soul's vibration. You're very welcome, Renee. And so if you go to East West, East West Bookshop webpage, uh, they're located in Mountain View, California. You can sign up for either of those. And I'm pretty sure we're going to go virtual and it will be via Zoom. And then um, I'm also working on a bunch of new stuff for you. And if there's anything that a topic you would like me to discuss on the live here, something that you think is a little bit more in depth and maybe I could create another freebie out there for you. Let me know, let me know how I can serve you. And if you're looking for coaching or you're not sure if you're looking for coaching and you'd love a free discovery call, you can go on my website and also sign up for that and have a free 30 minute discovery call with me where we talk about what is the one main issue that you're having right now and what you can do about it. Um, and there is no obligation, nothing. 30 minutes with me, free, and we will figure out what the one main issue is you have and get you going so that you can get it fixed and corrected and move on, right? So that you are living your best life and you open up your eyes every morning expecting miracles. Take care and I will see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.